the Joe Rogan experience. You know what once scared me more than anyone that I've ever read? I read about this thing that um, DARPA was putting together. It's a, a robot called the Eater Robot, E-A-T-R Robot. It's a robot that fuels itself on uh, biological matter. So it essentially could eat bodies. So you've got a murderous robot that eats people. The, it's like That's the its fuel. Worst kind of things that human beings could achieve. It's like people are sat around trying to yeah. come up with them. Well, they're the, you know, they, they, they're responsible for a lot of really crazy innovation in terms of like military stuff. You know, but Boston Dynamics, you know, they're the ones that make those crazy robots and they work with DARPA. And those are the ones that make those robots that you can't kick over. Right. You know, I mean, that's what you need. One of those that eats people and you send them to the battlefield. <laughs> kick it over. Yeah, no, that's the first thing we established is you can't kick it over. <laughs> I just think that's that's the big fear is that future warfare will be our robots versus their robots. You know, if we're starting to bring about the worst aspects, uh, the, the worst things that a human being can conceive of, let's channel them through into yeah. reality. It, yeah, it does make you fear that the apocalypse is real. I thought it was bad enough when in the malaise of my younger days, I like, uh, thought, oh, wow, imagine if there was a cleaning service where the person would come around and clean dressed scantily they do uh, that they do that whatever yeah. devious shit you can dream up someone's trying to turn a buck yeah. off it and they've taken it to the extent of the non-kick over robot flesh eating robots yeah yeah, yeah what is this jamie is this a new one it's a new video today oh god watch this this is so scary is this boston dynamics yeah there's something very <coughs> eerie about that type of motion. You know, like the way that a, the movement of a snake is deeply coded to be unpleasant when yes. you see it. There's something about you think that movement, you think that ain't good. Enter but it's the truck it's towing. Wow. Oh my God, they're pulling a truck? And yeah. it's tiny little tootsies. Those that, they're that strong, they can yeah. pull a truck? Ten little robots. That's a giant ass truck. I mean, it is also just a husky sled made out of expensive <laughs> robots and a truck. They've spent a lot of time and endeavor to go backwards. I, I guess, kind of, but... To an evil showing, Santa Claus. They're showing how strong these things are. I don't like... I don't like their gait, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's an unpleasant gait. Yeah, you should be un, you should be uncomfortable with it. Yeah, that's... Not, I'm not easy at ease with that. Well, that it's not like human. It's nurses. not animal, and there's no compassion in it. It's, just, it's, it's feelingless. But that's what you got to worry about. Have you ever seen that episode of Black Mirror, where the lady gets chased down by the drones? I've not seen that. What, the one where they're bees? No, there's a woman who's being haunted. She's being hunted uh, by a robot, and it's terrifying. Because of its remorseless because, lack of humanity yes, and, and empathy. looks just like that. looks just like those things. Those yeah. are real. Like, Charlie Brooker, he's, yeah, he's plugged yeah. into it. That man's got good imagination. He's amazing. He's yeah. amazing. That show is fantastic. But these things, look, what we have to worry about is once artificial intelligence becomes sentient, and you can somehow or another attach it to these objects that move, and they, they run on solar power or they have, you know, nuclear fuel cells or some crazy shit that allows them to exist for a long period of time. I mean, I you, you don't have to worry about them contaminating environments if you plan on killing everybody in the environment. Oh, man. And also there's no means of regulation, is there? Because this, because this is the apex of human endeavor, they're in, what, what can govern that? What can regulate it? And like you say, there'll be a Chinese equivalent for any of this stuff there's nothing that's above it going is this a good idea should we pull back what did he Elon the, the, he just pulled up a thing that said they're making that now yeah, yeah. Yeah, got that one I just now. showed you they're a hundred different models of it are going to be available starting production this summer <sighs> doesn't say how much they're, they're going to wow cost, but available for people to buy well it says a hundred different models it says produce a hundred models that probably means it'll produce a hundred of them mm -hmm. like a hundred different companies are going to want them but I bet it's more than that. Yeah. And Depending about how much they cost. Yeah, it doesn't say how much it's going to cost. They're going to announce that later. But they showed uh, uh, like a robot arm coming oh, out. Oh, that looks so creepy. Head. Look at that thing. Imagine we have one of those things in the room filming. We should get one. No. No, don't, what don't it takes give over. One it. day we come here, it's got red eyes. And it's like, fuck you. Fuck you. What, what you've done to the earth. We're the first ones to help it. Don't try and befriend it, Jamie. <laughs> it's going to be listening to us like <laughs> Alexa. 
<laughs> that's how be... it begins, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, there's something creepy. arachnoid and eerie yes. about that. It's almost like, you know, now tr- 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 see if this tunes into the DMT component of what we've been talking about. It's almost as if we've already experienced this reality. We've already been through the version where those evil insectoid robots take over. So when we see it on the screen, we think, oh no, we're doing that thing. Oh, we're right. doing that thing where we create those things that bring about our destruction. And I believe it's because we've become biased to commerce and a particular type of progress. Mm. Uh, but one narrative has succeeded. <laughs> because we necessarily had to throw off religion bec- you know, at the dawn of the secular age because religion was becoming systems of bias and systems of oppression and, wh- and systems of, uh, what do I want to say, elevating certain types of power and supporting it at least. We have to go, hang on a minute, this religion, a lot of it seems like bullshit. What we've done is we've abandoned the sacred. And I think if you abandon the sacred, meaning there is more to life than what we can understand. I listened to the Brian Cox episode and I spoke to Brian Cox, the British physicist, uh, astrophysicist on my show as well. And when he talks about, like he said that, you know, we know that there's not some additional component to a human being because we can break down everything that happens when you move an arm, yeah. you know, or whatever. And I feel like we only have limited instruments. We only have limited instruments. There's certain frequencies that we simply cannot read. What else is going on when people are having these transcendent psychedelic experiences? We're accessing elements of consciousness, energies and frequencies that we are not able to access while we're in this state and everything we're achieving and everything we're building we're building on this platform and the bias of this platform is towards progress and materialism and I think the result is flesh eating robots and those evil monkey warrior (laughs) soldiers and we might I want to calm down have a little talk about what it is we're trying to design yeah I don't know if I agree with Brian on that particular point that we think we know everything about where consciousness emanates I don't think that's necessarily true, but I like the fact that he thinks that way because he's such a rigid hardliner for science. And the guy works at CERN. I mean, he's a a brilliant, brilliant man. So, of course, he thinks that way. I also don't think he's ever had a DMT experience. (laughs) 